So now that we've completed our review sections with the algebra review, the lines and functions review, and the trigonometry review, we can finally get into the concepts of calculus. So calculus, as far as we're concerned in Calc 1 this first semester, we're going to be dealing with three primary topics. The first topic will be limits. Limits will be lead way to something called derivatives. We'll spend the vast majority of time on derivatives, and then we'll do antiderivatives or integrals at the end. So everything is based off of derivatives and antiderivatives are based off of limits. So this next chapter, chapter two on limits, gives us the foundation of what we need to build the rest of the semester, all the rules, okay? We're going to do in section 2.2, it's finding limits graphically and numerically, two different ways of finding limits. And again, primarily all of chapter two, primarily all of this first test is on finding limits. A lot of this is gonna require that we use a calculator. Um, we're gonna be evaluating tables. So what I want you to do is go in Canvas and look under test one materials. Right before this section 2.2, you're gonna see something that says table of values with a TI-30XS multi-view calculator. That's gonna show you how to evaluate a limit using your calculator, using the table feature on your calculator. We're gonna create a table of values. You're gonna do that numerous times in this section. So please make sure you go into that table of values with the TI-30XS multi-view calculator handout and work through that so you're comfortable using table features. When I am recording these, I don't have the ability of pulling my calculator up on the screen. So you'll hear me talk through the buttons that I push on my calculator, but you won't physically see the calculator. I know that's frustrating and I know that's not ideal for either of us. So it's really, really important that you go through that handout because you'll see exactly what buttons I'm talking about and exactly which order to pay, push them in. It's, it's the same process every time. Okay, so go through that handout on the calculator, limits, first chapter, very important. Let's go ahead and get started with our calculus material. It says an introduction to limits. A limit, in the terms we will discuss it, is the idea of as x approaches a number, what is happening to the function value or y value. So if you remember, our x values are left to right. So we're talking about as we go to a certain x value. I don't know, we can make it up about x being uh, the number five. So here's an x value five. As we go to an x value of five, what happens to the y value of that function? So as we go to a certain left to right value, x value, what's happening to the function and the y value? A Couple of things that I want to know, or want you to note is we're not just looking at the x value, we're looking near that given x value. So the x value doesn't even need to be defined at that point, it's just what's happening near that point. So that word near, very, very important to us. What's happening near the point to us, but not at that point. A concept that I'm gonna say, a sentence that I'm gonna repeat numerous times this semester. So we're gonna start off with an easy one. It says, consider the following graph of f of x equals x squared plus one. What is happening to the y value as the x value approaches one? So again, what we're doing is we're approaching the x value of one from both directions. The question is, what is my y value approaching? What is my y value approaching? Okay. So if you look on this, I'm gonna put my pen, my little laser pointer on the function. I'm gonna start approaching x equals one. Notice I'm coming from the left side of x equals one. So I'm going from the left to the right, to x equals one. Notice my y value, what's happening to the y value? Well, the y value seems to be approaching a y value of two. Same thing, if we come from the right of x equals one, so I put my highlighter on there, I'm coming down, I'm coming down, I'm coming down. What happens to the y value as I get really, really close to one? Well, it looks like that y value is approaching from above, but it's approaching the number two as well. So from the left, it approaches two. From the right, it approaches two. So it says we can see as x approaches one from the right or left, the y value is approaching two. So how do we say that mathematically? We would say the limit as x approaches two of the function x squared plus one, and that's not true. It shouldn't be the limit as x approaches two. This should be the limit as x approaches one. The x value approached one of the function x squared plus one is two. 
So it says we can use math notation. Where's our math notation? Here's the math notation right here. I'm going to read this to you, and it's very important that you understand this. So one step at a time. It says the limit. LIM stands for the limit. Then you would say as x approaches 2, and again, that shouldn't be the x old number 2 there. That's a typo. This should be the number 1 right here. So the limit as x approaches 1 of the function, the function was x squared plus 1 equals 2. So this is the x value. I guess I should do that in blue to keep it the same color. This is the x value. x approaches 1. The answer is the y value. The y approaches 2. So that was graphically. Looking at a graph, just put your finger on the graph, come at that the x value from the left, come at the x value from the right, what's happening to the y value. That's evaluating a limit graphically, but what if you wanted to do it using a table or numerically? What could you do? You could create a table. So it says another way to determine a limit is to look at a table of values. We will take x values to the left and to the right of 1, getting closer and closer to 1. Then we will find the corresponding values by plugging the value of x into f of x equals x squared plus 1. So in other words, if I said x equals 2, how would you find the y value? Well, you would just plug 2 into the function anywhere you see an x. Whatever you get out is your y value. Well, that's exactly what we're doing here. We're plugging in a given x value, and we're getting out the y value. So what I want you to notice again, we're looking as x approaches 1. So if you notice, we start off with 0.9. We go with 0.99 to 0.99. And if you notice, what happens as it's going 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999? I'm getting closer and closer to the number 1. Same thing if I go the other direction. I start off with 1.1. Then I go 1.01. And then 1.001, notice those numbers are getting closer and closer mathematically to the number 1. So what did they do? They plugged these numbers into the actual function itself. Again, the function here, the way they got this is by plugging, taking that x value and plugging it into x squared plus 1. So this is where you want to use a table of values on your calculator. So how can we get this table on our own calculator? You would hit table on the calculator. Remember, I'm using the TI-30XS multi-view calculator. I'd hit table. Clear out any function you have in there. I would hit X, that X button on the left of 4. Hit squared, plus 1. I would hit enter. Start and step don't matter, so just hit enter and enter. Ask X is what you need to make sure that you've highlighted. So if it's on auto, just hit the right arrow and select Ask X and hit Enter, then hit OK. Now you're going to type in 0 0.9, Enter, 0 0.99, Enter, and 0 0.999, Enter. If I notice on my calculator, the first thing that I see is when I plugged in 0 0.9, I actually see a fraction. I see 181 over 100. If you're ever getting a fraction on your calculator and you don't want the fraction, you want the decimal version, what you have to do is go over to the number. So I hit the right arrow and then I hit up twice. So I've highlighted 181 over 100. I'm going to hit the double arrow button. The arrow that's in the bottom right of your calculator it says enter and right above it's the double arrow button. Hit that double arrow button and it will give you the decimal version instead. It'll say y equals, and I'm getting 1.81 on my calculator. So anytime you get a fraction and you want a decimal, or vice versa, if you have a decimal and you want the fraction, you hit that double arrow button on your calculator. So that would be the values of 0 0.9, 0 0.99, and 0 0.999. And I could record those y values in the chart provided right there, if those, if those were blank, which they will be blank in the um, next problem. Okay. So that's coming from the left. Now I would need to put in the other numbers. So I would go to the top. I'd put in 1.1, enter, 1.01, enter, and then 1.001, enter. Again, the first one's giving me a fraction. So I would just, it says 221 over 100. I would just go over the 221 over 100. I'd hit the double arrow button, and it shows me the value of 2.21. 
The other ones did come out as decimals, so I see the 2.02. My calculator says 2.0201, but that's perfectly fine rounded here. And then I have 2.002 in that next one. So what I want you to notice is what's happening to my Y values. Again, my X value is approaching one from either side. What's happening to my Y value? Well, look at 1.8, 1.98, 1.998. What is it getting closer to as I move towards the number one? Well, you would say that it's getting closer to the Y value of two. Likewise, if I start on the right hand side and I start moving in 2.21, 2.02, 2.002, this Y value here as I come from the right is also getting numerically closer to the number two. So since both the left and from the right, both of these numbers are approaching the number two, truly, honestly, I don't care what happens at that point. I only care what happens near the point. I know from the left it's approaching number two and from the right it's approaching the number two. So that would allow me to write the limit as x approaches one. Remember my x value approached one of my function. So I could either say f of x or I could write it like this. This is the exact same thing, the limit as x approaches one of, and instead of writing f of x, I could put in the function. So I could say x squared plus one here equals the y value approach two. Again, the x value approached one in the table, the y value approached two in the table. So this would be my statement. As we approached this value for x, my y value approached this. And that's all a limit is. A limit is just a concept of, as I get closer here, what's happening to my function value. As I get closer and closer to this x value, what's happening to my y value?